I am here in the Maasai Mara in Kenya on safari and I've got two Micro Four Thirds flagship cameras with me, the OM System OM-1 and the Lumix G9 Mark II. I've spent a lot more time with both cameras now, so I thought I would give you my updated thoughts and do some more comparisons and show you some lovely photos and footage. Let's get stuck in. Karibu Kenya! <laughs> First of all, let's redo a stabilization test. I'm going to delete the clip out of the original video. It was never my intent to make anything look better or worse than it was. It was a genuine mistake and I'll tell you why in a bit. So first we have sensor only on the OM-1. Pretty respectable, but there's a little bit of warping in the corners. And then this is the G9 sensor only, still a little bit of warping, but a little bit less. Both are using the Maker 12mm lens, so it's sensor only. Then we have MIS-1, which is digital and sensor on the OM-1. And I've got this set to plus one, which is what I found to be the best setting. And then on the G9, we have sensor plus digital and no lens stabilization. This is still the maker manual focus lens. And this is sensor and lens and no digital on the G9 Mark II, which is the setting I use overwhelmingly the most. And then we have all guns blazing on the G9 Mark II, sensor, lens, and digital. But just to show off, dual and electronic running. So here is a vlogging scenario. I'm using dual stabilization on the G9 Mark II, so no digital crop and it's nice and smooth and there's no punching. And then on the OM-1, because we don't have a stabilized lens, we have to use the digital stabilization, which does give us the punching. And it's quite dramatic in comparison. I'm gonna talk for a little bit about the stabilization in each camera and also the differences between the brands. If you've got everything you need out of the stabilization test, then skip to this time code for more cool stuff. In researching these tests, because I really wanted to get them right, I learned a heck of a lot about both Lumix and Olympus slash OM system as a business and the different ways that they go about things. And I thought it isn't discussed very often online and I thought it was pretty cool. One interesting difference between the two systems is there just aren't many stabilized lenses on Olympus slash OM system. I think there are only five to my knowledge. I may be wrong. Let me know if there's more. And of those five, there's only one that has a more standard focal length, which is the 12 to 100 IS Pro. The reason I showed tests between stabilized lenses and not stabilized lenses in this video a minute ago is because the average user experience from an OM system user won't have access to stabilized lenses. Whereas when you're shooting Lumix, every single kit lens you use, every super telephoto lens you use will likely be stabilized. So you have a basic base user experience that's slightly different from system to system. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just how two different camera brands do things differently. Now, when it comes to optical versus digital stabilization, I have to say, I'm not usually the biggest fan of digital stabilization. The reason being is it's a process that happens after the image is captured and it can cause warping and it can cause weird things to happen like the camera wants to stick to a subject that you don't intend. Also, the thing that annoys me the most about digital stabilization on any brand is you do get a digital punch in. You have to punch in so that it can change all of the gyro stuff and make the image look stable. I also really dislike some of the artifacting and different things that digital stabilization can add into your footage versus only optical stabilization. So I was using MIS-1 and plus one for this setting, which is the highest of the image stabilization settings in the OM-1. I'm well aware that this is not the right setting for this scenario. I'm just using it as an example. Hear me out. We'd stop for lunch underneath a tree in the Maasai Mara over there somewhere. It was super cool. And I was doing some walking with the camera shots. Now the walking with the camera shots are best at plus one. Then we went back into the Jeep, back on the hunt for some animals, and I forgot to turn the stabilization down. And this was the result. These sorts of longer shots with longer lenses work better in stabilization zero in my experience. And then you get lovely shots like this. Absolutely gorgeous. But my point is digital stabilization is great until it isn't. 
I think in high pressure environments like Safari, it's very, very easy to leave your camera on the wrong setting and then you get weird stuff happening. Versus optical stabilization on the Lumix cameras, you don't have to think about anything, there's no digital crop, just blooming works. I like things that just blooming work. My brain is small enough as it is. I need all the space in there to think about my compositions and my footage and my photos. Anything that the camera can do automatically and take away from my brain space, the better in my opinion. I have seven Olympus lenses and I've spent thousands of pounds on them. They're not cheap, some of them are pro and not one of them has stabilization. Meanwhile, on the Lumix system, you can kick a stone and you'll find a stabilized lens. There, I'm done. I'm done talking about it. That's the difference between the two brands and their stabilization methods. So let's talk about sensors. The OM-1 has a lovely stacked 20 megapixel sensor and the G9 Mark II has a 25 megapixel that's a new micro four thirds sensor with some new interesting technology called dynamic range boost. Let's talk about the OM-1 sensor and what is a stacked sensor and what are the benefits? A stacked sensor has absolutely nothing to do with image quality. It's all about readout speed. It will give you an improved rolling shutter performance, which can also follow into your burst modes. When you are shooting things very quickly, you want as least rolling shutter as possible so that the animals or whatever it is you're shooting stay sharp and don't have any distortion within them. A stack sensor will also give you really fast autofocus when you are shooting very quickly. So it's a cracking piece of technology and it works so, so well in practice here in Kenya. I've loved using the OM-1 sensor for birds in flight, fast moving animals, the lot, it's been cracking. But I have to say, the G9 Mark II has been just as blooming good. It's been hard to differentiate when I've been picking them up, which one is which in the real world. So let's do a couple of side-by-side -side tests to try and see how they stack against one another. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Brace yourself, here is some rolling shutter tests. I hate doing these tests because it makes me feel a bit nauseous, but a lot of people have asked for them, so here they are. There's not two of me, so I'm gonna have to do it one at a time. So I start slower and then move faster because I think that's more indicative of how we would pan for birds rather than throwing the camera around. The OM-1 is super good, as you would expect with a stacked sensor. The G9 Mark II keeps up until we move very quickly and then we do see a little bit more of wobble introduced. But I do think the wobble is introduced well beyond the point where you would naturally use a camera. If you look at it when you would just like normally be panning for a bird through the sky, it will stack up very well, pardon the pun. I need to stop using that pun, that's a terrible pun. And let's sort of see a real world example. Let's have a pixel peep on some of these burst mode shots because the OM-1 shots are of course very clean and crisp and all the animals are not warped and no rolling shutter problems. And on the G9 Mark II I don't see any issue there either. The bird is in focus and if you keep your eye on the background as the camera moves there doesn't seem to be much wobble rolling shutter sort of stuff to my eyes. This may differ if you were shooting through very challenging situations, like maybe following a bird through reeds. Maybe it would show up a little bit more than it has here, but so far so good. So I had a lot of questions about the speed of the mechanical shutter and how long it can go for in both cameras. And this is in the 10 frames per second mechanical mode, which they both have. Overwhelmingly, this is the setting I've used the most here. With larger animals, it's been amazing. Even with birds in flight in a pinch, it's been really, really pin sharp and accurate on both. But let's have a see side by side and see how long they can go for. My hunch is a very long time. So the G9 Mark II went for slightly longer, but <laughs> seriously, <laughs> it's both really impressive. I think it's very clear to say both cameras can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot probably long after any of us need them to shoot. It's brilliant. You've got tons of options and your camera won't let you down. The G9 Mark II has a bigger buffer with 200 images, so even if you're using faster shutter speeds on that camera, you will be able to shoot for a little bit longer than the OM-1, which I believe has 90 frames in the buffer. This is my buffer clearing speed test and I'm presenting this without comment because I've seen a few of these online and my results seem to be quite different to everyone else's, but I'll just explain my working out. 
And if I've done something wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm using the fastest card that I own, which is a 300 megabits per second card, a V90. And I'm filling up the buffer until it stops. So that's 200 shots on the G9 Mark II and 90 on the OM1. I'm using the 90 figure on the OM1 because when you half press the shutter, it tells you there's 90 shots available and then the speed significantly drops when you hit 90. So I'm classing that as the buffer. Same on the G9 Mark II, when you hit 200, it slows down. And it seems to be that they're very level pegged. I don't seem that one is significantly faster or slower than the other. The G9 Mark II obviously took longer, but it did twice as much work. So they both seem very similar on this front for me, but hey, I have absolutely no faith in any of my findings at the moment, so <laughs> take that with a pinch of salt. I tried it with the SSD and it shaved a whopping one second off the time, so I'd probably recommend just getting fast cards if this is important to you. And both cameras will allow you to continue shooting once you've done a big burst mode shot. You've got whatever's left in the buffer after you've stopped shooting, and as soon as it starts processing the files, which both do very quickly, you can continue shooting until you reach the limit of the buffer again. So let's have a pixel peep at some of the 10 frames per second on either camera. The hit rate is just off the charts. It's so, so good. And it comes particularly in handy for birds in flight sometimes. Obviously we've got the pre-burst modes when you're being methodical and you have a bird on a branch and you know that it's going to set off. But if you're in a jeep and someone shouts, there's an eagle coming, you've literally just got to go, ah, and hope for the best. Sometimes Safari is chaos. <laughs> on the numerous occasions I've done this with either camera, they have both astounded me. They've worked faster than my brain, faster than my eye. They've caught the subject and given me the results that I require. It is incredible how fast both of these cameras are for wildlife. That's my husband. He's walking to the pool. I'm talking to you guys on the last day in Kenya and they're all going to the pool. This is how much I love you, how much I love you. So I have two lenses here on Safari with me that I've been using the most. I have a Olympus 40 to 150 f2.8, which is bloody amazing, pardon my French. And then I have the Lumix Leica 100 to 400 Mark II, complete with a two times teleconverter, which is also blooming amazing. Let me tell you, I did feel a little bit smug sometimes in the van when I was shooting beside someone who was having a full frame weightlifting session. And I was just like, oh yeah, it's 1,600 millimeters in full frame terms. I'm just holding it with one hand. <laughs> so silly. It's so convenient for Safari, but I digress. My point being, check on all the images which lens is from which thing, because I've been swapping them interchangeably throughout this trip because I wanted to see how the Olympus lenses worked on the Lumix bodies and vice versa. And I do think sometimes because it's a shorter focal length, the Olympus lens is a little bit sharper. So I do think some of those photos are a little bit better but the 100 to 400 is miles more versatile. So there's pros and cons to both. Anyway, so burst modes revisited. I shall caveat something I said in the original video. I said, you can put any lens on the G9 Mark II and shoot 60 frames a second. And that is technically true. You could put a potato on it and it wouldn't block it in the settings. What I urge you all to do is use common sense. Don't stick like a 10 year old prime lens on there that's pants with a really bad focus motor and expect amazing results. But if you put a very good or even a semi good lens on there that's relatively modern with a decent focus motor, you will get great results at 60 frames a second, 25 frames a second, whatever you want to shoot with the G9 Mark II burst modes. With the OM1 system, you have six specific lenses that will shoot 50 frames a second and that's your lot. And then everything else is 25 frames a second. So you could theoretically put an Olympus lens that isn't compatible with OM1 on a G9 Mark II and get a faster frame rate. It's super cool. But obviously use common sense. I thought, I thought that was, you know, it went without saying, but apparently that was quite controversial. So while we're doing the maths on the OM system lens front, because I am a bit of a nerd and I've really enjoyed researching this, you've got six lenses that will do 50 frames a second, right? Six lenses, super. Then out of those six, there is only three which has image stabilization. And one of them is 6,700 pounds. One of them is a 300 mil prime. And one of them is the 12 to 100 IS Pro. So you've literally got one lens in a standard focal length that 
actually lets you use the full potential of the camera. One, one, one. But saying all that, here in the real world, where it matters, I've used the 25 frames a second on both cameras more than the higher high frame rates. I think 25 frames a second is probably more than enough for the vast majority of things. So I wouldn't let the burst modes bother you too much. I just wish an OM system would make the range a bit blooming bigger, maybe? Lens stabilization for all. <laughs> high frame rates for all. <laughs> Stop gatekeeping it with expensive lenses. So here are some of my favorite shots in pre-burst mode. I have loved this mode for birds in flight in particular. You've got quite big birds here in Kenya, which makes the whole thing a whole lot easier. <laughs> you know, when you're in England and it's cloudy and you're shooting a sparrow that's this big, you can really begin to feel like a terrible photographer. When you're here shooting eagles and vultures, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So the burst modes are great. The hit rate is incredible. It takes the guesswork out of it because you are half pressing your shutter. Wait, 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 wait. Bird flies off, hold the shutter, follow the bird, job done. You've got one second before you press the shutter and all of the time until you let go of the shutter. Amazing. I love it, I love it, I love it. I don't think I will ever appreciate a camera without this mode as much. This is a must have feature for me going forward for my favorite cameras. It's that good. Like if you don't have a camera or you've never used this feature, blow me by one. The original G9 does it for 0.4 seconds and then the OM1 does it and the G9 Mark II does it. I'm not sure if anybody else does it. Let me know in the comments. It's epic. So let's talk menu systems and usability. I have waxed lyrical on this channel about how I think the Lumix menus are the most user-friendly on the market, and I still agree. But the OM system, OM1, round of applause, guys. It's easy to use, it's easy to learn. I dare say it's intuitive, which are none of the words I've ever used for an Olympus camera before. <laughs> The menu system is brilliant. I found swapping between the cameras really easy. I found finding everything really good. I found using things quickly when you're in high pressure moment, fine. Oh goodness, it just got bright. I think I'm gonna turn around. So let's talk about video. I have got creatures great and small from this trip with video on both cameras. And I have to say both cameras did awesome. I think there are more options on the G9 Mark II particularly the 120 frames in 4K, having continuous autofocus. The HD 120p on the OM1 comparatively doesn't have continuous autofocus, so I've not used it here at all because it's basically useless. However, most of the time I've been shooting 60p on both because I think that's mostly enough slow motion in general. I like 60p, it's good. I've been shooting the flat profile on the OM1 and I've been shooting Cine D on the G9 Mark II. The OM1 is fantastic because it gives you the option to put a flat profile on video. So even if you press the video button when you're shooting in a photography mode like shutter speed priority mode and you want to take a quick video, it will automatically switch to the flat profile. I love it. On the G9 Mark II and all Lumix cameras, you press the video button and you are in the photo profile that you are already in. So I shoot my photographs in Cine D and then I press the button and my video is Cine D. I so wish with all my heart that in Lumix you could have a bit in the menu that says video, vlog, no matter what. If you're coming at it from shutter priority, aperture or movie mode, just make it all vlog because I haven't managed to grade this footage as much as the OM1. So points to the OM1 for that 100%. But now let's just talk about, you know, single shot, everyday use with both cameras. If you are shooting a larger animal that's moving quite slowly, you may not need a burst mode at all. And it works fine with single. I think both have been incredibly snappy with the autofocus. I've been picking them up indiscriminately. And I think I've got some cracking photos really cracking photos. I'm so happy with both cameras. I love them both. This is like the most wet leaf review, but they've seriously both really impressed me now. I've spent more time with both of them. Both cameras were not perfect though. Anyone who tells you any camera is perfect is blooming lying. Even though they've got top of the range autofocus and animal detect and eye detect on both, there's a lot of grass here, not surprising. <laughs> and animals like to be in the grass and eat the grass and lie in the grass. And sometimes the autofocus likes the grass a lot more than it likes the animals. And both cameras suffer from this. If you're shooting in the all uh, mode on both, sometimes it gets a little bit drunk and goes, oh, never mind that gorgeous 
zebra. Look at this grass, how cool is this grass? It's a bit annoying. You can quickly alter it by just whacking single point. You can even touch the screen on both and you know, it's like, dude, I want you to go there go there and it's dead easy to do i think autofocus however good it is is always just going to be a tool that you need to use and guide it's not something that takes all that responsibility away from you i think if it did the role of the photographer is becoming more diminished as technology progresses so you do have to have a little bit of common sense and point it in the right direction sometimes on both cameras i will say the eye detector on both cameras can cut through the grass brilliantly that was the best mode i think if you're shooting through grass and it worked i'd say 90 percent of the time sometimes you needed to poke it to give it a clue but yeah both cameras have done really well in very very tricky autofocus situations so i've touched on this before but let's talk about it more that rhymed cross lens experiences i've been using both of these lenses on opposite bodies throughout the holiday and they've both on the whole done very very well in the longer focal lengths where these lenses excel because they're both super telephoto lenses they've done great this burst modes they've done great where both lenses sort of come undone on both systems actually is if there's an animal moving towards you at the wide end and i think both of these super telephoto lenses are more geared towards stuff that's happening far away so it's quite a tricky scenario for the lens anyway so in those situations it would be better to have the native lens on the native body but i think if you're thinking of switching camera brands switching lanes in either direction and you already have a good body of lenses it's not as though they're useless look at all these photos that i've got on cross lenses like you can get some cracking results so i would say swap see how you get on and then if you are finding that it's not as good as you would like sell one and buy the equivalent on the other brand but i've been really impressed it's not perfect but it's exceeded my expectations as to how well both cope on cross lenses even like the animal detect works and everything works continuous autofocus obviously works they've done brilliantly so let's go through some handheld long exposures this is one of my favorite tests because it's actually something i use in street photography all the time hate a tripod and if i want to get some light trails or some motion blur in people having the ability to have a sharp handheld long exposure i think is brilliant so we had dual is on lumix there's no digital stabilization available in the photo modes on the om1 we had sis on auto both did up to five seconds without breaking a sweat. I think that's incredible for both. I should have said this about a hundred years ago, but we're still 0.4 firmware on the G9 Mark II. So things are only gonna get better as it progresses. Let's talk computational features. These are a bit marmite between people, I think. People either love them or never use them and don't know what the hell they are. I think I'm in the love camp because I think the more a camera can do for you the better give me all of the features all of them in the OM1 camp we have live composite and starry AF and <laughs> it makes me laugh because I'm always like starry as f and then we've got live ND on the G9 Mac 2 we only have live composite mode which is my favorite anyway and it's super cool there was a lightning storm so it was a great opportunity to try out live composite mode on the G9 Mark II. The OM1 does it as well, but I've never really used it on Lumix cameras properly before. It works in exactly the same way. Weather sealing. No safari trip would be complete without mentioning this because my goodness do you need a dust proof camera. This is beyond essential. Don't even think of bringing a camera that is not weather sealed and dust proof because it was dusty beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> Anything that comes out of your bag needs to be weather sealed. My friend Rachel Sinclair has been wrapping her camera up in a buff because she's an expert wildlife photographer. And I'm like, damn, why didn't I think of that? That's such a good idea. On Safari, there's no way you're changing lenses often because there's just so much dust in the air. So weather sealing essential, both cameras smashed it. So there are my more up-to-date thoughts now that I've had a lot more time with both cameras. I hope you found this helpful. I'm not going to declare a winner because I don't think there is a winner. I think it's different strokes for different folks and all that. I can only say that in the real world, with me using these for hours and hours and hours and hours on end every single blooming day, I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience and I'm really, really proud of the images and the footage that I've got from both of them. Watch some different videos on these cameras on my channel and let me know your thoughts below.